Hi, welcome to the Invivo Service Center. Um, what we're going to talk about on this video is the diagnostics for the SoundDoc Original Series 1. And you can tell it's a Series 1 because it's got the inset grille um, and no battery on the back. If it was a portable, it would have a battery on the back and a little bit that swivels out in the front. If it was a Series 2, this metal grille would wrap around the sides. But this is inset into the grille, it's rectangular, the top isn't flat. So it's a Series 1 Bose SoundDoc Original. Now these come in two types. And before you watch this video and start to diagnose your dock, you need to make sure you know which type your dock is. There are two types, Type A and Type B. And what you need to do is go to our website, www.invebo.com. That's I-N-V-E-B-O.com. And enter your serial number on the base of your dock and here's the serial number on the website there is a gold bar about a third of the way down it says click here to check your dock type and if you click on there a form drops down and you enter your serial number this 17 digit number here ending in AE enter it carefully because a lot of people put six instead of five on the third digit um, so check the digits carefully enter them on the website put your email address in um, and then when you press OK, you'll see a green uh, bar come up at the top saying yes, your, your details have been emailed to you. Now the chances are if your dock is white, it's going to be a Type A because there are very few um, Type B white docks in Europe. There may be some more in America, but in Europe, if it's white, it's Type A. But check your dock type. So before you go on, they ask beyond this point in the video, check that you have a type A dock. Just to reiterate, from this point forward we'll be talking about a type A dock and if you use these diagnostics to diagnose your type B dock then you won't get the right um, solution, you won't point to the right fault. Okay? So here we have a type A dock. Uh, the, the, the type A and type B refers to the ele internal electronics. There are two variants of the internal electronics. They're not compatible with each other and of course when you're ordering a board you need to know which type of dock you have and incidentally when you do place an order with us for any boards or upgrades or components we ask you for your dock serial number during the checkout process and if you enter your dock serial number we will double check what we send you is correct so here we have a type A dock and I'm going to talk about the very common failure modes um, the, so you've got a dock and it may be just not working so the first thing we're going to check you've got no sound Okay, you plug uh, the power into the back of the dock and you've got no sound. Now, at this stage, is a very simple check. If you have no sound but your iPod is charging, so that when you press the iPod onto the dock and you plug it in and you see the little charging indicator on the iPod indicate that it's charging, and so a little up on the right hand side, a little battery, and usually a little um, lightning bolt goes across. And when you plug it in, you can see that it's charging. Now, if it's a Type A dock and it's you plug your iPod in and it's charging but you've got no sound then um, the next thing to do is unplug your iPod, remove the docking adapter if there is one here and just have a look at this connector now I don't know if you can zoom in on there, can you see it? Yep. Yeah. Um, this connector is obviously looking a bit dog-eared, you can see that the corners are broken off there should be a little post standing there and so you know, this one isn't in great condition but um, it is fixed to the board pretty well actually so I can you can see I'm applying some force on the connector there and it's not really moving sometimes you'll find that it will rock back and forth and if there's any sort of significant movement, movement there it means that the connector is broken but the fact that your iPod is charging it means that the connector is still fixed onto the baseboard in here and um, so a type A dock if you've got the connector is looking pretty well anchored onto the board it's charging your iPod and incidentally, um, when I say charging an iPod, if you put an iPhone in a Type A dock, an iPhone will not charge on a Type A dock, okay? So you need to check it with one of the older iPods. Or, um, um, and if you look on the website in the technical guide section, there is a chart, and it's the uh, charge mode chart. And on there, it shows you which devices charge on a plain Type A dock. So if your Type A dock has had, not had a charge upgrade, it won't charge an iPhone. To do the charge test you need to plug in an older generation um, classic iPod with what they call Firewire charging. So 
the Type A dock supports FireWire charging, F-I-R-E-W-I-R-E, -E, FireWire charging. And if you look on the chart, you can see which items support FireWire charging. So if you're doing the charge test, make sure you're using the correct Apple device on your dock to make sure that you have connection and you have power. Okay? We'll talk about what happens in a moment if you don't have power, but if your iPod is on here, it's charging, you've got no sound whatsoever, then it's a very common fault and the fault is with the sound processor. Okay. Now if you look on the sound processor, there is a little module underneath this base plate with it's held on by these four screws. Inside there is a, a, a module that's got metal, shiny metal cans on both sides. You can't mistake it. It sits in the base under here. And if your Type A dog is charging but you've got no sound and the connector looks good and it's not loose, um, the chances are your iPod, uh, your sound processor requires a service and um, if you go to our website and look under uh, module repairs um, if you want to minimize the cost of the repair you can send that module in to us so if you're in North America send the module over if you're in the UK you can order the whole dock repair for a fixed price or you can just order the module repair it's up to you the module repair is obviously much cheaper because for a start, the shipping costs are much lower because it's a much, much lighter. It's a small unit that fits into a small box or a jiffy bag. So, um, so your iPod is ch charging, collector looks good, type A dock, uh, no sound, sound processor. Okay. Now, if you're unsure whether it's the board or the sound processor, what you need to do is to um, look towards the end of this video, I'll show you how to do it, is to take the sound processor out, take the docking board out, and then go onto our, our website and order the free diagnostic check. So if you look under module repairs, there is a free diagnostic check. And if you order the free diagnostic check, send the two units into us. Well, we, you, you place the order, we send you some uh, address labels and instructions. You send it into us, we do a diagnostic check on the sound process, so let's say yes or no, it is faulty. I would say at least 90% of the ones that come in are faulty and we will check your docking board too and we will come back to you and say it's your sound processor, your board is good, the sound processor is faulty uh, the standard repair charge on the website applies and you can see it when you go there, the standard fixed price repair for the sound processor or your sound processor is good, it's actually your docking board so what would you like, would you like um, uh, a standard replacement board or the upgrade boards which I'll show you in a moment so there you go, That's, that concludes iPod charging Connector looks good, tight on the board, no sound, sound processor repair, sound processor service or sound processor free diagnostic check. So, you know, that's the way to fix it. Once it's fixed, it'll be absolutely fine because the builders, these are built really well, these docks. And uh, once it's been uh, repaired, serviced and modified, it'll be fine. Okay. Now, if when you plug the power into the unit, you do not get power, okay, You've got two possibilities. It could be the, uh, the, the, uh, the dock is not receiving any low voltage power, or it is receiving low voltage power, but the connector is, is broken. Okay. Now, um, first thing to check is to turn the dock around and have a look at this uh, plastic surround in the four pin power input connector. And you should be able to see four pins in there make sure all four pins are actually there make sure the plastic isn't broken or deformed make sure none of the pins are black or burnt so it looks good this one is complete it's in good condition therefore it's unlikely to be this okay so turning to your dock um, check the connector and if the connector looks particularly bad um, and the connector is rocking backwards and forwards or loose or detached or doesn't feel like it's fixed down properly then the cause could well be the, uh, the docking connector okay so you might need to order one of the three options we have on the website for a type A dock again I recap reiterate we are using talking about the type A sound dock original so you have a straightforward um, sound dock repair connector repair kit type A that will just, if you put this one in, the Sound Dock Connector Repair Kit Type A, available on the website, it's got everything you need to do the change. You don't need to do any soldering or any cutting or anything like that of wires. Um, it's, uh, the screwdriver is in the pack. 
the foam overlay support is in the pack and the fitting of these boards are covered in separate installation videos so if you you know cut to the installation video if you want to see how to put these things in but um, this will go into your dock and it will restore the original functionality so uh, it won't play it will play iPhones and uh, the new generation of Apple devices with the standard Apple docking connector, the legacy one, but it won't charge your iPhone and you will get messages when you plug the um, iPhones in saying this is not compatible. Straightforward replacement, restore standard functionality. If all you've got is a standard iPod, an old uh, classic iPod, then you might prefer to have one of these. Okay. Uh, the second option is, the next one up is the charge upgrade kit, which is what we call the USB charge upgrade kit. Again, this kit only applies to the SoundDock Series 1 Type A. This will give you USB charging, so your iPhones, your iPod Touches and the later generation of I, um, Apple devices will charge and play without annoying messages um, on, on the screen. And it's what we call USB charging. Again, if you're unsure which devices will support USB and which ones Firewire, look on the website, there's a chart. Look up your Apple devices and then see whether it's got USB and Firewire or Firewire only or USB only charge and it will say charge and play. The chart is fairly self-explanatory but if you've got a whole mix of devices you want to put in here and you just don't want to use one of the later ones and you're concerned that some might not charge, some will charge, then look on the chart. I think there are only three Apple devices, very old ones, very old ones which won't charge with USB charging. So for an iPhone, iPod Touch, all the later stuff, and most of the iPod Classics, this is absolutely fine. And this one brings this up to the latest spec of uh, uh, Soundbox Series 1. So that's a charge upgrade board. And then the third one is the, uh, the Bluetooth uh, upgrade kit. Um, this has got the connect. Obviously, with all of these, you get a new docking connector. That's the whole point. Um, as well, this one has got is the B Inexis BC6 or the BC7. Um, gives you the standard docking connector, USB charge upgrade and Bluetooth. Installation of these covered in other videos. Okay, So um, you're assuming that um, your connector is looking pretty bad or rocking back. If you can't decide if it's your connector, if the connector is not obviously damaged or obviously loose, then you need to um, check your power supply. So cutting to the power supply now, you can see the power supplies are here, and if I put them side by side, instantly you can see there is a difference. This one on the right, the black one, is a uh, PSM36W208 series. That's the later one, okay, and you can see that the body is shorter. It's about a half an inch or 12 and a half millimeters shorter in length than the, the, older, the older type. So we're going to put the new type to one side and assuming at the moment you've got an older type. And so the older type is, as I say, the 201. Okay, so we're talking about the 201 at the moment. If you've got a 208, wait until the next section of the video. The 201 um, is a good power supply, uh, but, um, and, and also, yeah, when this is plugged into your power, so you connect this to the mains outlet, after about 20 minutes or so, it should get warm. And if it's staying absolutely stone cold, you'll feel that something's going on inside. It won't get hot, but it'll be warm. But if it, a, very, a very, very strong indicator is that if you put the power in and it stays absolutely cold, then you need uh, a power supply service. Um, we service these, we remanufacture them, we change all the old parts uh, for new, high reliability parts. And after that, it won't give you any more trouble. So uh, the green option is to uh, go online, buy our service, and we will... Um, send the power supply to us and we'll service it. You buy, buy you place the order, if you're in UK or mainland, um, or Europe, um, and you place the order, um, we send you some labels by return, uh, instructions, put in a jiffy bag, send it to us. A couple of days later, you get a remanufactured unit back uh, in the post or by airmail. Now, uh, this one um, should get warm, okay? So it's a large one, it's the 201. Plug it in, wait 20 minutes, half an hour, it should be warm. If it's warm, it's a good indication that something's going on and it's working. If it's cold, and most of them stay cold if there's no power output from them, they say stone cold, they're definitely faulty and they definitely need to be serviced. Okay. Now, um, if, you, if it does get warm, there's some power conversion going on, that's a very good sign because 
I don't think I've ever seen one that got warm that didn't work. So, um, and I fixed hundreds, hundreds, and hundreds. So, um, the thing to do is just check your DC plug as well, because this is the plug that goes in the back of the dock, and make sure that all four pins are present, that they're not cracked or broken, and that not blackened and deformed or anything particularly wrong with that. That looks good. You've got four pins that are all straight, and they're connected to the actual plastic moulding. And then just inspect your cable all the way down to the top, make sure it's not loose, hasn't been chewed by a rabbit, we see a lot of those. Um, and you know, no nicks, hasn't been trapped under a table leg or something like that. Cable's in good condition and the connector is good. If it stays cold, it's faulty, but if it's warm, it might be your cable. So just check your cable carefully. And again, if the cable's damaged, we can fit a new plug, we can fit a new cable for you. Just go online and order the remanufactured uh, power, service power supply. But to, to reiterate, if you do that, you need to send the power supply in to us. If you want to buy a new power supply, you need to contact us at sales at .com. Occasionally when we have them, we list them on the website, but we've usually got very few. So if you want to buy one, then contact us. Okay. So that uh, concludes the diagnostics of 201. Okay. The other thing, actually, before I move on, is just to shake it to make sure nothing's rattling around inside. You can often, when a transient, uh, power transient has come down the line, from the main supply, it might be lightning, it might be something the power company have done. Um, there's a devices inside which explode, and if you rattle it, you can hear them rattling about. So if you hear things rattling around inside, then that's a sign that something wrong with it. So again, it needs to be serviced. Okay. Um, and then moving on to the the, the 208. This is the PSM uh, 36W 208. Um, again, these are much more reliable, but these do not get warm. Okay, so if you plug it in, it stays cold you can't tell whether it's faulty or not. So the best bet with this, obviously check the wire and the cable are the same. If there's anything obviously damaged with the cable, then, um, then you know, it's likely to be the power supply. But um, if this is, this will stay cold, this will not get warm, so you can't tell whether it's working or not, okay? So the only way you can really tell whether this is working or not is by taking a multimeter, a DC multimeter, and measuring across these two pins, there should be 36 volts across those two pins. You've got the curved part upwards, 36 volts across these two pins. So plug it in, put your DC multimeter into those two positions and you should see 36 volts. Um, there'll be 18 between these two and 18 between those two as well. So these two top two are ground, these two are the supply. So I say measure, if you've got power there, it's a good indication. If you can, borrow a power supply from someone else, uh, someone else has got a dock, Quite a few people say, I oh, know it's not my power supply, so I borrow my sisters or my friends, and um, you know the dock still doesn't work, but my power supply works on their dock. So the obvious thing is to try it. But if this stays cold, um, it's still working. You can't tell by the heat test on this shorter 208 power supply. Okay. So I'm just going to cut now to you've diagnosed your power supplies. If this one isn't working, you've got no power on your dock, and the connector looks good, you can't tell with this because it stays cold. So cutting to the dock. Um, Type A dock, charging your iPod, connector looks good, you've got charge on your iPod device, the correct iPod device, then it's probably the sound processor which is uh, causing your problem. So what you need to do is, if you want to order a sound processor module repair, you can remove these four screws in the base. Some of them can be very tight to get out. I'm going to have to hold this between my knees. Very good tip. So strengthen the thighs. They are very tight on this particular one. Some of them aren't as bad as that. So obviously make sure. Make sure you've got a, a good screwdriver. As I say, they're not normally anywhere near as tight as this particular one. There are some that obviously they haven't had the right screws at the factory, so they've used larger screws. muscles. Okay, so remove the four screws that hold the case on and the cover just lift off. Revealing our sound processor and uh, the replacement of this sound processor, the, the procedure to replace this, to put this back in and reassemble after you've sent it into us for service is shown on another video. But the service here, literally it's only here for a couple of days. So if you're in the UK, 
we email you when we receive the processor. We email you a day or two later when it, the repair is completed. If you send in for the diagnostic check, we email you saying the processor is faulty, although it's not faulty, it's the front board, and then outline the options and send you a PayPal invoice once you've told us what you want. Okay. So it's literally here for a couple of days. So if you're in the UK, you're talking maybe you, your dock will be up and working after maybe a week or just over a week, door to door basically. If you're in the States, it's four to seven working days to get here, a couple of days here, and then four to seven working days to get back, unless it's holiday period or you know there's national holidays or security, in which case it might take a bit longer. To post the sound processor to us from North America and Canada is seven or about seven and a half dollars in a jiffy bag by USPS, the standard packet airmail basically, take the post office and the best way is to put it in a small box, the U United States Postal Service has got a very small box about the right size into which you can put these components, so I'll just show you how to take it out, you just literally grasp the plastic part and pull gently and you can see this little ribbon cable comes unplugged, again look on the other video on the reinstallation, it leaves you with this part in your hand, don't lose these rubber grommets because you'll need those, a little rubber mount, take those off unplug, remove the sound processor, grasp the ribbon cable here and just pull the ribbon out gently, there's the sound processor and then on the, you'll need a T8 Torx screwdriver, our kits usually come, if you buy a kit you get a screwdriver but you, if you want to do this don't send this whole part in because it, it'll uh, add significantly to the weight so you know your seven and a half dollars might become ten and a half dollars in shipping Remove the three Torx T8 screws, and these T8 drivers are pretty common actually. You can buy them anywhere, and any most hardware stores have got a T8 screwdriver. And a lot of the little screwdriver kits you get have got the screwdriver in. So Torx T8, T8. Uh, take those three out, pop that off there, and there you're left with the, uh, the ribbon cable, sound processor, and your docking board. Okay. There's three items that you need to send into us for a sound processor service. And you, as I said, you can order the diagnostic check online, in which case you send the units in. You pay a few dollars just for return postage or a few pounds. Um, uh, or you, if you can order the fixed price sound processor repair. Um, and when it comes, we will do the diagnostics. If there's nothing wrong with the sound processor, we will, we will refund your repair charge. Uh, because it's going to be the board. It's very, very, very rarely anything up the top half of the dock. It's usually one of these two items that have failed. Um, if this has failed, you usually see the distress on the connector or a loose connector. Um, if this has failed, your pod will be charging, but you'll get no sound. Okay. But anyway, in any case, you want to fix your dock. You want to get it working. Order the sound processor uh, service and send the parts in to us. Um, as I say, a couple of days later, you will get a uh, notification of dispatch. Follow the video that shows you how to do the reassembly. Separate video, detailed step-by-step -step reassembly of your dock. Uh, and that, sh that concludes the diagnostics of Sound Dock Original Series 1 Type A.